as I mentioned before, uh, trigger management is one of the staples of managing atopic dermatitis. So uh, adolescents need to learn on their own uh, how to avoid their triggers. Skin care is a very big deal, and that's a transition. When you become a teen, you're taking on more of your own self-care of your skin. And uh, let's say you're a young 13-year-old boy, you don't necessarily wanna be slathering your skin with a moisturizer two or three times a day, head to toe. Uh, so, and mom isn't controlling it anymore, or dad isn't controlling it, so uh, sometimes uh, those are not at their optimum uh, uh, for um, treating and, and managing the disease. I think that the thing that distinguishes disease in adolescence is that if you still have atopic dermatitis by the time you get to be a teenager, your, your chances of outgrowing it are going to be low. Um, but the suffering that happens in children who are younger than 12 years old is, is the same or, or possibly even higher. Um, but, but choices for adolescents are colored by lots of different things. So standard of care treatment for atopic dermatitis is topical therapy. Topical therapy is always thought to be safer, you know, certainly is less expensive than the newer biologic um, treatments, and it doesn't require long-term lab monitoring. But but topical treatment is a real burden. I always call it, you know, the tyranny of topical treatment. So there's a lot of details to doing topical treatment, especially if you want it to work well. And teenagers are, uh, have, have, especially teenagers that aren't sleeping very well, that are impacted by their disease, they just have very low tolerance for putting topical medication all over their whole body multiple times a day. And so, you know, most people just don't use enough medicine. A subset of people can't even get the right medicine because of payer restrictions. And adherence is, is a big, big problem. And it's a, it's a, the biggest problem, I think, in the adolescent population. They're just, they're, they're difficult. <laughs> Treating adults and, and adolescents for atopic dermatitis is very similar. And the principles are the same. Uh, the tolerance of treatment, I think, to, for adolescents is, is probably a little trickier. Adults are maybe more willing to uh, be inherent to, to treatment. But I also think that there's a subset of, of adults who have lived with their disease for such a long time that they are just beyond even coming to uh, for health care. Um, so, and adolescents tend probably to come a little bit more just because they still have their parents and, and they also are, have insurance in, in many cases. You know, 50% of children in the United States are Medicaid insured. Um, and then once you get to be 19 years old, then you don't have that option anymore, and that really cuts you off. In fact, yesterday I just saw a kid, he's 18, he's just about to be 19, and that's a kind of a crisis for him. He's on expensive biologic agent, and he's doing extraordinarily well, but the question is what's going to happen to him when he turns 19. So adolescents have more access to health care, and adults may be a little bit less. It just depends on the adults. So that's one of the important, I think, parameters that sets that age group apart. Well, we just need a treatment that is usable, <laughs> that doesn't require two or three hours a day to achieve, that's uh, tolerable, uh, and that's affordable. The unmet needs for adolescents are similar to that of adults. Long-term control, stop the itch. Just stop the itch and let me sleep, and most people are going to be pretty happy with that outcome. Um, and uh, again, we don't have... Um, treatments currently. Uh, the new biologic on the market is, uh, as I said, uh, looking quite favorable and we're very excited that that will bring the relief for patients that have been suffering their entire lives. Physicians may wish to be more aggressive in treating children and adolescents with atopic dermatitis with the long-term goal of arresting the atopic march or the other comorbidities that come. We want to stop this as soon as possible because the longer a person has this disease, the more the impact of the disease and the comorbidities are in play. So if we can shut down this uh, immune response, this uh, inflammation, uh, we're all going to be better off 